Good morning, dear comrades. Today we are performing an experiment that may be interesting to those who do not like to freeze in the car in the morning. We are talking about the lucky owners of alarm systems with auto start. The experiment will show us how much the air recirculation affects the engine and cabin warm-up speed compared to air intake from the street. To perform an experiment, we take the same car, put it in the same conditions with the same settings of the engine, with the only difference that in one case the air intake will be from the street, in the second case the recirculation will be turned on with an air intake directly from already heated up cabin. It's obvious that in the second case the warm-up will happen faster. Now let's examine how significant is this difference and does it make any sense to bother with recirculation. So, we have Toyota Prado 150, diesel 2.8 as a test subject. It will be heated with a viscose heater, it still has a boiler, but it will not participate today, maybe later. So, the temperature outside is plus 1 Celsius, which equals to 34 Fahrenheit. The car settles for almost a day, more than 20 hours. The engine temperature at launch time is also plus one. Yes, that's probably all. Let's go. On the left you see two videos. They are synchronized at the time of engine start. Above, air is taken from the street. Below, recirculation is turned on, air comes from the cabin. So we warm up to 75 degrees Celsius or 167 Fahrenheit. Exactly at this temperature the machine turns off the viscose heater and the revs drop down, which is clearly visible on the tachometer. Now you see the revs are about 1200 per minute and will be significantly lower when the heater turns off. This is very clearly visible, and this is a good cut-off point for our test. So, in the lower left corner of each video we see the sticks indicating the fan speed, as Toyota shows them out. There can be seven of them in all. And here the engine temperature is shown as well, however, in increments of 10 degrees Celsius. Honestly speaking, there was too much fuss to do it more precisely. In general, this should be enough. Yes, the video is accelerated 10 times. This can be understood by the blinking of the light bulb. It will now go out. I snap the belt behind me. So, as you see, one fan stick has appeared. But the truth is, one stick only shows that you have a fan in your car. It blows a little there, and the temperature of the engine coolant is 40 degrees Celsius about 104 F. Heating goes simultaneously since the stove doesn't work. Now you see there are already three sticks, four sticks with recirculation. They heat up to 50 degrees or 122 F the same and then appears the difference. It can be seen even on the arrow of the temperature indicator. You see, it creeps from below much more vigorously. We see in the bottom video five sticks appeared earlier than in the top. Now, it will be quite interesting. You see there are four sticks again. That means the cabin is already warm enough, no need to blow. At the top though, we see the fan goes out all the crap, taking away the heat from the engine at the time the engine lacks it itself. And the difference in the position of the arrow is visible to the naked eye. An actual difference in the cabin is not 10 degrees now, but I guess much more. Now, with the air intake from the street you see the fan speed also decreased. It became warmer in the cabin, and only after that somehow it all started to warm up, but still very slowly. That is, in reality, it took more than an hour to warm up without air recirculation, and it was my big mistake to drink coffee before starting this experiment. That's it. The cabin is warmed up. In the bottom video, with the air intake from the cabin, a warm-up to 75 degrees is finished. In reality, it took about 23 minutes. At this time, while taking air from the street, the engine had not even warmed up to 60 degrees. And another pair of numbers. 
With the air intake from the street, a comfortable temperature occurred 22 minutes after the engine started. Well, comfortable means conditionally subjective, comfortable for me. When taking air from the cabin, I'm sorry, the camera falls time to time there, the comfortable temperature came about 15 minutes later. And after 22 minutes it turned real Africa and I had to take off my jacket because it was not designed for such extreme temperature. Oh, this is the moment when the engine already had 75 degrees. There the tachometer arrow jumps because I had doubts about whether the viscose heater works at all, as the heating was too slow. Yes, it works, everything is fine, the lake leaks, Toyota still loves me, but not so fast. Yes, this was a moment when the battery in the camera ran out and I had to replace it. We see here the warming up is going on, it will take quite a while, you can watch it in the video. What else should I add to this topic? Firstly, to the owners of the Prado 150. We have a PTC heater, and for some reason there is a lot of debate on this, under what conditions they turn on. In my car, they turn on almost immediately after starting the engine, a maximum of a minute, and begin to blow only on the windshield. This is felt if you touch with your hand. In winter, snow and ice melt on the windshield. At the same time, there is not a single fan stick on the climate screen. The fan doesn't work and nowhere more is blowing. Now, when this experiment was set up, I checked it once again. Yes, everything is so. Well, it's clear that the engine warms up faster with the recirculation turned on, and the cabin warms up faster too. It is already visible. I think that at minus 10 Celsius, that is 14 F, the difference will be even more significant. It will be possible to repeat this test in Alaska, I do not see any problem with it. But at the same time, up to about 50 degrees, which is 122 F, the stove practically doesn't work. Therefore, this way or that way, heating is performed at about the same speed. Therefore, if your task is simply to get an engine with a sufficient temperature so that you can drive, it doesn't matter if recirculation is turned on or off. Now horror stories. When recirculation is switched on, the windows are fogging up. This is true. The windows do fog up, but only if there are people in the cabin. We are talking about startup. There are no people in the cabin, the car is empty, no one releases moisture, so the windows should not fog up. And even if they get a little foggy there, then when you come, turn off the recirculation. All this will clear faster than you remember your plans for the evening. It definitely makes sense to do auto start with recirculation. But there is a problem. On all the cars, with a recirculation button, with or without fixation, before turning off the engine, you could poke it, turn on the recirculation, then turn off the engine and go home. The next time you start the engine, it will be turned on or off, in the very state you left it. In new cars, in many, not all, in Toyota in particular, recirculation is always turned off when the engine starts. Apparently, this is a full protection, so that the windows do not fog up. Therefore, if you want to attach such a feature to your auto start, to accelerate warming up the engine and the cabin, which is also important, or probably more important, the DIY mastering is inevitable here. In my car, I have a smart piece of iron, which gives the command to the climate system, only at auto-run mode, so that it turns on the air recirculation. Otherwise, it will be turned off always. Just here are the brains of Toyota. Well, here they are. So the Toyota engineers make us the Toyota engineers as well. Now let's summarize the results. With air recirculation the cabin and engine warm up much faster. I think when it's freezing, well, we'll check it later, the difference will be even more significant. But if you need to warm up the engine just to the temperature when you can sit and ride, and it doesn't matter that it's cold in the cabin, the windshield is all nice and so on, then it doesn't matter if air recirculation is turned on or off. 
But if you want to get not only a ready-to-ride warm engine, but also a warm cabin, there is a strong reason to upgrade the auto-run system to even smarter level, so that it could turn the recirculation on. I've done it anyway. But that's not the only thing to care about. In addition to auto start with or without air circulation, there is also a pre launch boiler, which can also be used in different ways. And there is still a Russian know how of a cardboard placed at the radiator. We'll soon find out how much this all affects the warm up speed and ease of use. Good night, and subscribe to stay warm!